good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are and whenever you are watching this video i am anu and today we are going to discuss about a topic of the stress management everybody is aware of the stress so i don't think so that there is any need to explain regarding that we will cover what are the causes of generating stress and we will of course discuss about the solutions how can we control the stress or we are going to cover 12 tips which can convert your stress into smile so without any delay let's get started so right the first and primary cause of the stress is urgency addiction how it's that as you know many people are there or even in fact some of you could be there who are having the uh, kind of the rat race in order to complete the project within the deadlines so normally people don't do it right from the very start or uh, do it very slowly they do it at the last moment so it has become a kind of the addiction to complete it on the spot that is in the urgency addiction and ultimately it causes stress interpersonal conflict nowadays we see many people are there our uh, children are there parents are there they remain busy in mobile too much they keep on spending hours right they keep on uh, sticking to the mobile phone they are glued to the screen for longer time ultimately obviously not spending time with their children and there is lack of understanding lack of trust interpersonal conflicts are there ultimately generating stress if we discuss about the multitasking yes one side a person is there who is working uh, like 9 to 5 and of course wants to earn more and more money indulge in rat race so completing or uh, starting his business also uh, like in the evening shift or the early morning hours and at that time he becomes too much obsessed in the work or in fact we see in the business they get or uh, they do spend 12 to 16 hours in work ultimately what happens they end up getting stress unrealistic target everybody knows about his level everybody knows about his uh, uh, we can say efficiency capability that this is the work for this much this is the work that i can do okay if i can work for the 8 hours and if i am working for 16 hours this is something beyond my comfort or i can say this is something beyond my uh, efficiency beyond my capability so i don't think so or i don't i want feel comfortable spending too much time right why am i doing it because the work uh, or the sales which i have to make in 12 months i want to make in 4 months right so i have shortened the time but what i have done i have make my work hours longer ultimately what will happen it will cause obviously put a burden i would enjoy the work rather i will take work as a burden i will take work as a pressure i will start spending life i will not be living life unhealthy competition ah oh, what does it mean people uh they start comparing for example a company is there which was opened like 5 years back and another company is there which was opened around 20 years back so the company a which was opened a five year company it is comparing itself with a 20 year company if this guy is getting too much sales or if this guy is getting uh, uh, like a uh, 100 sales why am i getting 20 sales just because that the person started just five years back but as he faced this unhealthy competition as he start the comparison ultimately there's a feeling of envy jealousy right and ultimately what happens causing stress long working days and job stress remember stress is a silent killer stress will not never be occurring from outside it will always be there inside it will always be there inside the mind 
you won't even come to know that when it will start killing you slowly and gradually. As we see that uh, this is a time, right? And this is pressurizing a person to complete the projects on time, before time, right? So the, ultimately what is happening? It is causing the stress. Now we'll understand how the stress is generated. What is the mechanism of the mind? So as we see, there are senses, eyes, nose, tongue, ears, and skin, right? These are external stimuli. What's the meaning of external stimuli? Which is observing the things from outside, right? Eyes can see, nose can smell, tongue can taste, ears can listen, and skin can touch. So these are the external stimuli. The senses are there which start the work. Mind. What's mind? The storehouse of the thoughts, past worries, and the future dreams, experiences, perceptions, and attitudes. Everything gets stored in the mind. Right. Intelligence. Senses is at the first portion. Mind is at the second portion. And the intelligence is at the third part. Or I would say that intelligent is having the topmost importance. It is actually the decision maker. Right. It will decide to do it or not to do it. For example, as if uh, you see a snake. Right. What saw a snake? Eyes. Eyes see a snake. It gives a message to the mind that it's a snake. So you scare of him. So be careful. Then mind turns to intelligence. It's a snake. What I should do? Then intelligence will respond. Uh, for example, there could be two situations. The one thing is intelligence will give a message. Just run away from here or leave this place. Otherwise, you'll get hurt. Or it can say, uh, hold. there's no option of running. So it will be better. Just a stick is there. Just beat it. Okay. Or uh, uh, just show the stick and it will run away itself. Or it will go away itself. And when you show a stick or ultimately whatever solution you find, once the uh, snake goes away, then the mind again gets relaxed. Earlier the stress occurred once uh, it saw a snake. But once the snake is gone, then the stress is also finished. Right? So intelligence is there, which is a decision maker. It will decide with what a person should do. So ultimately, what is our main purpose? To strengthen the intelligence. Because mind can divert, but intelligence can provide us the real solution. Now, let's watch a video.
So, have you noticed what happened in the video? The more and more the person was reacting on the situation, it became more complicated. And once he just relaxed himself, he analyzed the situation, he ultimately got the solution. So, this is what happens to us. Sometimes the problem is not so big, but when we react towards it or when we react on it, it becomes very complicated. I'm sure all of you are having different experiences with that. You can pause the video for some time and even you can think about the situation when it uh, the same thing happened with you. The situation was not so big. The situation was not so terrible. But it just became more complicated when you started reacting towards it. So it does happen. Make sure. Now, uh, we'll understand the mechanism that how the stress is created in the mind. First of all, as we just observed, external stimuli is there. External stimuli means senses. When senses see something or when senses do something, it gives a message to the mind. For example, senses just, uh, you are uh, sitting near the window and you just hear a sound, loud sound, right? So senses means ear, gives a message to the mind. But yes, hey, what kind of sound is there? The mind will start thinking, oh my God, is it explosion or uh, is it uh, kind of the something bad happened? A bomb blast is there? What is there? Right? So mind will turn to the intelligence. Intelligence will say to the mind, just be relaxed. Let's see what has happened outside. Then the intelligence will means when the person will look outside or you will look outside. You will uh, come to know, oh my God, it was just a noise or it was just a loud sound of a tire burst. The tire got burst and uh, this kind of uh, bursting sound it produced. Oh, right. It was normal. Now the mind is again relaxed. But when the intelligence doesn't come to know the reason, oh my God, where is the sound produced? How is the sound produced? What happened? Right. So these kind of thoughts are there. If these are unknown, obviously the stress will generate in mind and to take corrective action that what should be taken, what action should be taken in order to control that? What should I do? Where should I go? Uh, in case if I get attacked, how can I remain safe? These kind of questions or these kind of things will be there, which will start producing stress in the mind. And if the reason you came to know if the corrective action has been taken, then no stress will be there. Otherwise, stress will be generated in the mind. Got the point? Now, let's move further. Some practical example. Just I gave one. You hear a loud noise outside the window. You are curious to know what has happened. Right. So, the loud noise was nothing but the bursting of a tire of a scooter when you looked out of the window not only your fear set at rest but you were also amused to see a person dragging the scooter so it means not only it removed your fear in fact you were smiling oh this happened i was just getting stressed there was unnecessary right so it was a kind of the funny thing now let's consider the another situation when your subordinator does not wish you good morning one day, you are enraged. For example, you are working at a higher position. For example, you are a manager and you are subordinate. You just enter the office and uh, your uh, subordinate is not wishing you good morning and you are enraged. How dare it happen? Why didn't she wish me? Right. It would produce stress in your mind. Now, uh, just tell me one thing. 
and basically there are two types of threat one is real threat and what is perceived threat as we see in the first example when we heard a loud noise outside the window you are curious to know what has happened so in this case first of all what we considered oh my god this could be the sound of a bomb blast so what kind of threat is there we just imagined that so it's just an imagined threat or it's just a perceived threat what could be the real threat if really in case bomb blast would have taken place then it would be real threat but as nothing had happened so it was just a perceived threat right if we consider the next example when the born in it does not wish you a good morning one day you are enraged so it could be perceived threat or real threat obviously perceived threat right how i came to know yes a born in it son had met with an accident that very uh, morning and so he was very disturbed once you came to know the fact you were sympathetic to him not annoyed so earlier it was a perceived threat for you it was just perceived threat right because uh, 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 something wrong had happened obviously his morning was not good and that's why he didn't wish you the good morning when you once you came to know you were relaxed okay fine that is a situation so it's just a perceived threat right what could be the real threat in case uh, one day before a meeting was conducted and you insulted your junior or you insulted your subordinate and when he sees you but still doesn't wish you that could be the real threat why that could be the real threat because it can ultimately affect the relationship it can ultimately affect the organization or the bonding between you and your subordinate so that is the real threat but once uh, or the thing which had happened it was actually a kind of i can say emotional moment for him so obviously at that time he didn't wish you it's completely acceptable it was just a perceived threat if you are considering the situation or if you are overreacting to the situation ultimately it will just produce stress in your mind now next one what happens when stress is generated right adrenaline is generated to take a fight or flight action as a way to overcome a perceived threat for survival now for example let's take a situation uh a chain snatcher is there it was just going on the road and a lady was wearing the gold necklace right so when the lady was wearing the gold necklace uh, he just snatched the necklace and he tried to run away but the lady took an action what she did she started beating or she took the knife from the thief and she started beating uh beating the thief and then she uh, took the gold necklace back from him so what she did fight or flight obviously fight and what could be the flight what could be the flight action it depends that which action you are taking fight or flight uh, for example you went uh, you go to a forest and a lion comes in front of you right obviously you can't fight with a lion what you will do you will flight means you will run away so when uh, there is a kind of the situation where you have to take some action at in that what happens when uh, as if you just saw the lion at the time it will produce stress in your mind why because adrenaline is generated in your mind and which will say to you to take some action either fight or flight okay but sometimes it does happen that we can't do anything neither we can fight nor flight now you will think what kind of situation could be there now for example you are working in an organization right and uh, you are uh, at not a like manager position you are working under a manager now earlier your manager your previous manager was there who was not you did not used to do work or you were kind of the lazy you were a lazy kind of the person he didn't ask you that what the target is there that you have achieved or whatsoever you were doing he was okay with that company faced loss and ultimately company took an action and he changed the manager a new manager was recruited who was continuously or right now who is continuously asking you 
for achieving the targets, putting so much pressure on you or uh, uh, asking that why the sales are not there or uh, why the company is facing a big loss or it's completely asking you why because you are uh, the leader of a team. A team is there who is working under you and uh, the manager is putting pressure on you. Ultimately, you can put pressure on team but you are the one who is the mediator? So you are so confused. You are so stressed. What should I do? How can I increase the sale? Now, in this situation, what will be there? You can't fight with the manager. You can't fight with the boss, right? Or even you can't flight. Means you can't leave the organization. Why? Because the uh, you are dependent on the company, you are working there, your family is there, you have to uh, completely, you have to support your family, you have to manage the expenses of your family. It could be a situation in your case, it can't be a situation in your case, it's just simply an example, right? So in this way, the stress will be created in the person's mind, the person's adrenaline will be generated and he can't do anything in this situation. Everything is just going the inside of the mind. Nothing is happening outside. He can't discuss with anyone. He can't, uh, let's take the example of the third person. I won't say that you, right? Uh, he can't, the person is there who can't discuss with anyone. He can't discuss with his family because he knows that if he discusses with his family, his family will be more and more pressurized. So he doesn't want to keep his family tense, right? So, in this way, how to manage the stress? Now, see, these kind of persons are there. The examples are there in front of you. The lady is so much fearful. Her adrenaline is generated. Here, this, if we see the guy, he's very violent. The same thing, adrenaline is generated. Now, let's do an activity. In this, you have to analyze yourself. Are you a reactor or overreactor? Now, before moving that, let's see the example of the person. Who is that? Reactor or overreactor? Obviously, overreactor. If we see the previous example, the lady, she was fearful, but the guy is very violent. This guy is very violent, right? Of course, overreactor. Now, imagine yourself in the following situations and tell, uh, just consider how would you respond. Driving your car in rush hour, overreaction, overreactor, what happens that uh, when somebody is just driving the car, sometimes it's a rush hour. Uh, he doesn't get space to park the car or even he doesn't get space to take out uh, take out the car from the rush. At that time, what happens? It starts blowing horns very loudly, right? It's creating stress for himself as well as for others. It's just overreaction. Getting a last minute work assignment. What's the response? Oh, yes, right? This happens. Last minute work assignment. Producing stress. Now, next example. Misplacing something in the house. Suppose you are looking for something which is misplaced. Again, the stress is produced. Dealing with incompetence at work. Now, if we consider this picture, who is stressed here? Boss or employee? Yeah, actually both. Why? The boss is stressed because he has to get more and more profit. He has to compete with others. He has to compete his rival companies. And why the person is stressed? Because the boss is putting too much stress, right? The boss is uh, saying to him to complete the project as soon as possible. Planning your budget. Sky is looking so stressed. How to plan the budget with this much money? Being blamed for something, this is very common. When the person is uh, insulted for something at that time or when the person is blamed for something at that time, what happens? The person 
listens to something and he starts responding with more force as we say eat ka jawab patthar se dena right so it does happen uh, when one person is there who has blamed the, on, on another person or who has blamed you ultimately it happens that you will overreact these kind of situation happen now anger is natural emotional response to these perceived threats right it happens that we become so angry in these kind of situation what kind of threats are there these are just perceived threats even if we consider the last example when you are blamed for something right probably you did not work as per the person's expectations or probably you did not work as per the person's uh, uh, demands and you are blamed but you don't know that what is actually going in the person mind why he scolded you why he insulted you if you understand the person probably your response would be changed but in case but obviously the person is not listening or the person is not asking hey buddy why you behave with me like that it's not uh, there's no uh, kind of the normal conversation it's just like uh, turns into an argumentative situation right so all of these are perceived threats because we have not understood the situation we just responded on the spot instant response so what could happen in the perceived threat that you can see yes why it is happening why it is happening in this situation we are not controlling our mind in fact the mind is controlling us and uh, we are not uh make sure we don't have to be slaves of mind we have to make the mind our slave uh another example of this we see a person is there for example uh a teenager teenager is there he is in a group of friends where his all friends are smoking so he they are uh, just forcing him also to smoke only once what will happen he will smoke once then twice then thrice ultimately he will be a chain smoker right another example uh, we see that the person who is just uh, having or uh, in the circle of friends where they are enjoying drink right or they are enjoying alcohol what will happen he will earlier he used to have after months then he will start having after some days then it could turn into daily right and ultimately what he will become he will become alcoholic okay so these kind of situations are there in this kind of situation the person's minds are controlling them right their minds are controlling them they are not controlling their mind very important lesson we have to control our mind we don't let our mind control us because this is very dangerous how it could be dangerous we'll discuss further so why we feel stressed there are five reasons very easy to remember that is ceo if means ceo if when our control is not accepted right i want to control uh, my family i want to control my uh, all relations i want to control my business i want to control my a uh, team right i want this and i want my family to follow what i want so this is when your control is not accepted at that time stress occurs when our expectations are frustrated for example we expect something from the person we expect that if i am not feeling full then the person should ask me that why uh, how are you the person should completely take care of me and the person is not having that much time or in fact the person is having time or he is in his another obligation and we don't know about the obligation we didn't try to know what kind of situation was there why you didn't come to me when i needed you the most if you talk obviously the relationship can be improved but in this situation we are just uh, assuming why uh, we are just thinking that person did not do what i wanted it means he is bad when our opinions are not accepted right suppose uh, 
suppose we give some opinion in the company we give opinion to our family and it is not accepted so in the situation what we should do we have to give only one opinion means we have to give less opinion and we have to welcome others opinions remember we have two ears and one mouth right means we have to listen to two opinions and speak one but what we do speak two and we don't even listen one so this is the main thing that we have to improve in ourselves when we feel someone has insulted okay when we think that yes someone has insulted me so in that situation also it happens in this situation i would like to quote the example of buddha uh once a person came to buddha and started speaking a lot started insulting him a lot buddha was completely silent listened to him patiently and at that time what happened after some time the guy he started weeping he started crying bitterly and he said that why it happened to me that i was blaming you for everything i was insulting you for everything and why am i crying now he said that you gave me a, for example you uh, gave give someone a gift and if the person does not accept that ultimately it will come to you in the same way when you will uh, you are blaming me i was not accepting your blaming or i was not accepting your blame i was not expecting i was not accepting your words so ultimately it came to you right so it does happen when we blame others or when we insult others or when someone insults us when someone blames us we should not uh, be very affected by that it's very important or when we feel frustrated due to inability sometimes it does happen that we start getting frustration due to inability for example if i am unable to some uh, perform some task or uh, i wanted to keep it or i wanted to complete that within a week i was not able to do that so i started blaming myself as i am not eligible for that i don't have much potential for that so in this way what happens that frustration starts occurring we don't have to be frustrated another reason i want to control we want to be in control of money situations and people without any interference examples we can see the boy is there who wants to control this the complete earth he wants that the planet or the people should work according to me here the person is there who is just flaunting money wasting money and this one is there we just want to control people and when someone is there who doesn't obey us or when someone doesn't work according to us ultimately we think that we have faced failure or we get too much disappointed and it creates stress in our mind it's not happening as per my opinion when we insist demand or command the things should happen our way but they don't it breeds anger and hatred so obviously when something doesn't go according to us then also frustration occurs and stress is generated and this uh, person is saying i'm feeling insulted or he feels that i'm treated unfairly or rudely i'm neglected i'm ignored i'm insulted i'm denied frustrated in desires so this is a kind of the threat to self esteem cause stress so we can see two examples the two persons are there here this one also is speaking so rudely and this person is also venting up his feelings frustration arises due to our refusal to accept the inevitable so sometimes it does happen some kind uh, some situations are there which are we don't welcome or uh, which just happen on the spot which happen instantly but we are not accepting that we are not independent <clears throat> in achieving success we are co-workers with god we have to remember one thing 
Now, if a person is there, for example, if a student is there who has performed the exam, the invigilator is there who has to uh, give the result, right? So ultimately, this is a kind of the situation where two persons are in involved. If we consider a company, in a company, the boss is ordering and the workers are performing. This is also kind of the co-worker situation. So we can't say that we are independent. We are not independent. We are actually co-workers with God. Efforts are in our hand, but the result is in God's hand. Or we can take the example of the planting of a tree. What we do? We just saw the seed, right? God gives the rain and ultimately a tree, a beautiful tree or flower starts blooming. A tree is planted. How it happened? This is a kind of the collaboration. This is the kind of the collaborative effort. We can't think that and we don't have to think that we are independent. We are also dependent beings, right? It's a just kind of the collaborative situation. In some matters, we are, in all matters, we are dependent on God. Or in some matters are there, this is a kind of the collaborative situation. Co-workers. Uh, we have done that. We face stress when CEO is very important and very easy formula to remember. CEO, if change conditioning by changing scripts written in our minds. We have discussed about the problems now, how we can change the scripts. Gigo principle, garbage in, garbage out, positivity in, positivity out, negativity in, negativity out, good in, good out. Very important and very easy to remember. Whatever we give to our mind, the same thing will be out. For example, if we are listening to a uh, very, or if we are spending time in very aggressive environment, ultimately we will also become aggressive to others, right? If we are keeping the positive things or if we are, uh, yeah, if we are putting the positive things in our mind, only we will share the positive things with others. So make sure positivity in, positivity out and good in, good out. Mind is like a book. Whatever we do in our daily experiences, uh, whatever people we meet, whomsoever we meet, everything is inscripted in person's mind. Everything is inscripted on this book. So we only have to write the positive things on this book, not the negative ones. What we have to write? Here are four types of thoughts. Positive, negative, necessary and waste. There are two thoughts which we don't have to write. For example, the negative thought and the waste thought means the past and future or all the negative like anger, stress, egoism, racism, laziness, revenge, carelessness, criticism, jealousy, or attachment. And we have to write down the positive thoughts like joy, love, mercy, hope, peace, honesty, harmony, tolerance, enthusiasm, and understanding. And which are the necessary thoughts means work, career, routine, and profession. So these kind of thoughts are there, positive and necessary, which should be inscripted on the mind's book and negative and waste should be completely avoided. Remember, this is the chariot of the body, right? As we see a chariot is there, a body is also having a chariot. These five senses are there, or these five forces are there. They are working like five senses, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. And these are tied with a rope. And this rope is mind. And the rope's control is in the hand of a person means that is the intelligence. And this, uh, we are this one, Saul. Where the intelligence is taking us, we will go to that direction. So it's very important to strengthen our intelligence. It's very important to work on our intelligence, to make our intelligence stronger. We don't have to take the decision of, uh, or we don't have to take, we can take the opinion of others, right? For example, if someone is saying to us that you should do this, you should do that, you should do this, you should do that, is delivering a lecture. We can listen to that lecture. Whatsoever is positive, we can take that. And whatsoever is useless, just keep that aside, right? Ultimately, the decision is in your hand whether to go for it or not. For example, when you pass your uh, 10th standard, it's very important to choose a stream, whether you want to go for the non-medical commerce or arts. 
So if one person is saying to you, for example, you go to the first person, you go to the a person who is saying to you in plus one, just go for the art because this is the easy subject and you won't having too much pressure. Computer is there, which is heavily in demand. So you can go for the math, economics and computer. These kind of subjects are mean. And okay, fine. You adopted that opinion and you go for the computers or these subjects, math, economics and computer. Ultimately, you are not interested in math. You are actually failing in the subject. Then you again went to the person or uh, the person said to you that go for the um, commerce line. This is better. Or the person says to you, okay, change your subject in art. You can go for the uh, simple subjects like welcome life or uh, some other like political science or uh, uh, some easy subject. It could be history. Okay. So if the person is saying to you, okay, what you did, you adopted those subjects. Again, you failed in the subject. So in this situation, you are not listening to yourself. Or you are not be uh, taking that decision from your side. In fact, you are dependent on others for your decision. We come across many persons. Some persons say to us, do that. Some persons say to us, do that. Okay. But we have to make our intelligence so strong that we can be the decision maker. And how we can strengthen our intelligence, how we can make our intelligence strong by reading the scriptures. In fact, in terms of religion also, sometimes some persons say to us, uh, it is important to do that, uh, to go for this religion or to go for uh, this tradition. Or sometimes some others are there who say to us, don't go for this tradition, just do in this in that way. For example, some religious work is there, which is to be done. So the best example to do that is to read the scriptures. From scriptures, you will be having a complete idea what should be done, what should not be done. Uh, if we take the example of Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavad Gita, some people are there who think that it's a kind of the only religious book. So how it is going to happen or how it's going to work in our practical life. Uh, when you go to the Bhagavad Gita chapters, you will come to know that everything is mentioned there. How much sleep a person should have in a day. This thing is mentioned. What a person should eat. What a person should not eat. Each and everything should be how it should be performed. Everything is written there. Total 18 chapters are there. The first six chapters are describing about you. Next six chapters are there which are describing about God. And the last six chapters are there which are describing about the world. Means how you have to survive in the world. Even if you are living in the world but you are not affected by that. Okay. Even if uh, something good happens to you or something bad happens to you. You are ultimately controlled. You are not uh, taking the decision as per the situation your mind is totally in your control you are not uh, getting over happy and you are not getting over sad means you are not getting over emotional so these kind of situations are there that one can learn when he will read the scriptures I think it's really important now what is the nature of the mind remember if it is controlled it will become your best friend. And if it is uncontrolled, it will be your greatest enemy. As if we took the example of the uh, the person like who became or uh, who becomes the chain smoker or uh, drug addict or uh, we can say alcoholic. So if the mind is in control, 